Well, basically, the equation says that a black hole, right, or mass, whether it's a proton or a black hole in the universe, is a ratio between the information in terms of Planck oscillators inside the volume and the information that's on the surface of the volume. So, so you have Planck little oscillators on the surface, and the ratio between the two is the energy of the system. And it comes out just right. It, it solves Einstein field equation, it solves for the mass of the proton, the radius of the proton, very precisely, much more precise than the standard model. And so what, in terms of curvature, so it means in terms of gravity, gravity is the curvature of space-time, uh, so if space-time is not smooth, as Einstein described it, um, that means that when it curves, um, so, so basically what, what, what this is saying is that it's correct that it's smooth, but it's only smooth at the, at the scale of, of human beings because we're so far away from the scale of the Planck. Um, so, but it's granular. At the, at the scale of the Planck. It's, it's very, very, very uh, discrete because it's very small. It's billions and billions of times smaller than an atom. Space-time at that level is oscillating with massive amount of electromagnetic fluctuation. Um, and so, uh, which are these little Planck oscillators. And so what the equation is basically saying, and if you, solve for the angular momentum of the system and so on, that's what you find, is that basically these plonks in these regions that we call mass or that we call reality, you know, particles, or black holes, whatever, is spinning. And, um, you know, when the, when the billions and trillions of plonks are spinning together, they, they, they find a boundary in space and that boundary um, produce, uh, you know, what we call the material world. When basically think of a field of, of plunks oscillating at very high level and region where there's a vortex in the plunk field. These region with the vortex we call matter, we call mass, we call energy. 